It started after the Chief Medical Officer, Sir Liam Donaldson, looked at the function of um, health protection and um, had a very far-sighted view of how things should be organised and realised that there were disparate parts of the service. Some people like the consultants in communicable disease control were in the NHS, the regional epidemiologists were part of the national picture and there were lots of disparate bits around the country which needed to be brought together into one agency which had as its prime focus health protection. The Health Protection Agency is a national independent organisation set up in 2003 to protect the health and well-being of everyone in England and Wales. The agency plays a major role in protecting people from infectious diseases like TB, influenza, sexually transmitted infections or meningitis, and from infections that are carried in food or water like salmonella, E. coli or listeria. Another important job is protecting people from hazards caused by chemicals, poisons or radiation, for example in accidental spillages or factory fires. The agency is also responsible for preparing for emergency threats to health, such as outbreaks of new or unusual diseases or deliberate terrorist incidents. As well as being a national organisation, the Health Protection Agency has nine regional offices. Yorkshire and the Humber is one of these regions, and its local teams are the coalface of the organisation, working with colleagues in the NHS to protect local communities and individual patients. Yorkshire and the Humber is a diverse region stretching from the Pennines and the Dales across to the North Sea coast and running from the North Yorkshire Moors through the urban conurbations of West Yorkshire to the former coal fields around South Yorkshire. It covers some 15,400 square kilometres and has just over 5 million residents. The Health Protection Agency has a regional office and laboratory based in Leeds and four local health protection units based in West Yorkshire, North Yorkshire, South Yorkshire and the Humber. The frontline staff are um, nurses and doctors who are trained in public health um, and admin staff and information staff and they work closely um, at local level with NHS um, staff at a population level looking at what are the uh, threats to public health. A lot of the work actually relate, has come right from 150 years ago uh, when people realised the tremendous toll on people's health that infectious diseases took, uh, a lot of it because of poor water and sanitation. Uh, and over the years, um, doctors, with my interest, have been particularly involved in improving the sanitation and water. And that's the sort of thing that still happens in developing countries. In this country, things have moved forward. We have a very good infrastructure. We've got health services and clean water, clean sanitation and healthy food. But infectious diseases are still there. They've never gone away. Uh, they still d uh, kill a lot of people. They still damage a lot of people every year. And it's our job to actually keep control of them in the population. We need to ensure that the, the food that people have is, is safe for them to eat. We need to ensure that the water supplies that they have are safe for them to drink. Uh, and that they, if there are any suspicions that they might be exposed to Legionnaires disease, for example, that we can go in and do investigations for uh, the organism that causes Legionnaires disease in uh, cooling towers or other water sources. Nationally, the Health Protection Agency has set a list of goals to achieve in protecting health. What follows are a very few examples of how the work of the local teams in Yorkshire and the Humber is helping to achieve those health protection goals. I think our most important job is actually to be the, the spy masters. We have to find out what's going on. Our most important job is surveillance, which is keeping a finger on the pulse and finding out what's happening. At the local level, the CCDC is, is the eyes and ears of the agency and um, is responsible for responding to local incidents. Um, the bulk of our work is taken up by infectious disease incidents. The typical outbreak uh, that happened was uh, last year, a salmonella outbreak in Bradford. What happened was the public health the doctor on duty noticed that, uh, was informed by the hospital doctors that there were a large number of cases with diarrhea and vomiting coming. So they immediately informed the public health on-call doctor who then contacted the uh, con consultant in communicable disease control who was on call. And uh, so within a few hours we had a team looking at where it's coming from and it, it became evident there were hundreds of people who had all eaten from a particular place. 
So our job was to immediately pinpoint the source and to stop uh, spread to any others. Uh, for, for this function, we really depended on the local authority who are the regulatory bodies. And um, subsequently, then it's about uh, reassuring people or uh, making sure that people are being treated adequately. Occasionally, we have outbreak and incident meetings, yes. Uh, but a lot of the work that's done, I think that, that's the sort of high profile that the outbreak meetings, but a lot of the work is day to day work, at ensuring that things, that outbreaks don't happen really, trying to make sure that the routine. Uh, measures are put into place so that you don't get to the stage of having outbreaks. This is Easing World School. It's um, a very large um, secondary school uh, in um, North Yorkshire. It's um, a school that we've had, uh, we have a very good relationship with the staff in the school and we've, ha we've spent some time here responding to an incident um, uh, involving one of the students a few months ago. One of our six formers last year was diagnosed as having TB. We were in touch with the family, so I got straight in touch with the Health Protection Agency once I found out what was going on, um, alerted the health and safety people at County Hall, but then after that liaised directly with the health protection people in York. They were absolutely brilliant. They put um, a team in place straight away to support us. We had a couple of very focused, very well organised, well led meetings with the health professionals. A normal response to any uh, case of TB is um, contact tracing where you interview the case and try and identify other people who might be at risk of acquiring the infection. Um, so following our, our investigations it was felt that there was a need to come into the school for, for two things. First of all to provide information and reassurance to staff and students and uh, subsequently we did need to come in and screen um, a large proportion of students um, to ensure that nobody else was um, affected and um, to offer vaccination to the rest of the school. I can't praise them enough, they were an absolute joy to work with and uh, we've had one or two contacts with them subsequently which thankfully haven't led to anything but I now know that I can just pick up the phone and talk to a Bere or one of her team and they'll advise me over the phone, it's great. I came to this area in the year 2000 and what uh, was what appeared to be very obvious to me as soon as I arrived was that we had a disproportionate amount of, uh, of cases of acute hepatitis this bay. In the year um, 2001, I managed to convince the health prison service to carry out um, a, a mass vaccination campaign against hepatitis B. And since then, the system has been in place whereby everybody who comes new um, is offered the, the vaccine so that either can start it or it can complete it. Our situation regarding incidents and cases of hepatitis B has improved quite dramatically. In the North Bank, we have got four prisons. The largest one is now the prison in the center of Hall, uh, which hosts 1,200 inmates. And this is a category B prison, which takes prisoner I, uh, I either straight from, uh, from the police cells or straight from court. Then we got uh, two uh, medium-sized category C prisons here in, uh, um, in South Cave. Um, which take people who, uh, uh, these are training prisons, so these are prisons, uh, prisoners who have already been sentenced. And finally here in Full Sutton, we got a category A maximum security prisons, fairly large, which takes, which takes the prisoners from all over the country. And this, the minimum sentence there is 40 years. Knowing that hepatitis B was so much more common in our area, there were no doubts in my mind that even hepatitis C would have been um, um, desperately common. And with hepatitis C, the bad news is that you don't have a vaccine. However, hepatitis C, if um, caught on time, can be treated and treated successfully. So the key things with hepatitis C is increasing the, um, the screening and provide appropriate uh, clinical service, specialist services for people who are found positive.
Again, the largest, the most, um, uh, the most, uh, the largest at risk group is represented by um, drug users, and therefore, again, the prisons were an excellent place where to go and start offering the screening and also making sure that we that there are specialist services there. In Hull Prison, we've recently introduced a pilot by which all men entering the prison will be screened for their hepatitis risk. Everybody leaving reception will receive written information about hepatitis C and we hope therefore to increase the knowledge for hepatitis C not only within the drug using community but everybody within the prison. I think the prisoners see the service as a window of opportunity um, for addressing their health concerns and their health needs, for being screened, for taking part in vaccination programmes and most of them are very keen to uptake the sorts of things that we can offer. I'm taking on the role of lead for healthcare associated infection in this region. Uh, healthcare associated infection, you might wonder, well, what's that about? Well, it's all the uh, infections that we hear about in hospitals that ought to be avoided, like the superbugs, like MRSA, the methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus. Obviously, that's got a high political profile at the moment. We all seem to be hearing about it on the news or reading about it in the newspapers. And there's a lot of concern that people are going into hospitals and getting a lot of infections with these germs that are difficult to treat. So the Health Protection Agency has a role in supporting colleagues in the hospitals and in the community in the NHS trying to make sure that we get the best possible measures in place to deal with these superbugs, uh, getting best practice from around the country and sharing it with our colleagues in the region uh, so that we can reduce these infections to the absolute minimum. The, the Health Protection Unit um, covers all the things that, that all other Health Protection Units um, are responsible for and that is protecting the local population against uh, communicable disease hazards in terms of both prevention and response to incidents and outbreaks. Uh, and we also get involved in protecting the population from chemical and environmental hazards, uh, both in the sense of the acute response to chemical accidents and the planning that goes on behind the scenes. And we collaborate very closely with the Primary Care Trust within the NHS and the emergency services in providing that toxicological and public health advice in the management of an acute chemical incident. We have within our boundaries the third highest concentration of major industries which are covered by the control of major accident hazard regulations. These are very large industries on the whole which um, could if not managed properly um, pose a threat. The recent incident we had on, on the south bank of the Humber was a chemical fire which resulted in the production of sulphur dioxide and hydrogen sulphide and on that occasion we were phoned by the um, ambulance service to be alerted they had been alerted in turn by the fire brigade and communications on that occasion were highly effective. On that particular incident I actually went down to the scene and face to face was able to advise the incident commander from the fire brigade in terms of the likely health risks from these emissions. The East Riding of Yorkshire is um, a vastly, um, mostly a rural area with a lot, a lot of farms. In fact, in East Riding there are, besides the poultry farms, there are more than 2,000 farms with all sorts of animals. Amongst these farms, however, only a tiny minority, a handful, just nine, are officially registered as open to the public. But we know that in reality, a lot of farms have some sort of contact with the public, even if they are not registered officially as open to the farm. We're here to, in order to try and promote the uh, awareness among both farmers and the public visiting the countryside uh, as to the possible dangers uh, of disease uh, which are communicable between animals and man. I set up a multidisciplinary group um, including uh, local authorities, uh, health and safety representatives, um, farming unions, 
and the um, f uh, beds from the DEFRA service and local beds. And we came up with the production of this farm manual. This manual is, very, is going to be very useful and is being useful already uh, to the farming community uh, as a way of them um, demonstrating that their awareness of the possibility of disease transmission to people on the farm, not only their own farm staff and themselves, but also people visiting the countryside who come to farm shops and who come and camp and caravan on farms uh, and go walking through public pathways through farmland where livestock is present. We provide um, radiation protection services to industry, to medicine, to research and teaching. And that basically in, in, entails providing mainly radiation protection advisor services. People who use radiation or companies who use radiation are required to appoint a radiation protection advisor. It's a regulatory requirement. NRPB actually provides an RPA service. We're contracted to two organisations that use radiation. We visit them on a regular basis, uh, carry out measurements, check radiation doses, assess potential doses to the workforce and give advice on how to work safely. We look at things like uh, gauging systems in factories. We also look at, to give an example of a different sector of work, we look at um, dental x-ray equipment in dental practices. In fact, we're the NRPB Centre for Dental X-Radiation Protection and we provide um, services to dentists throughout the United Kingdom. We liaise on a regular basis with HPA, in particular with the regional groups and teams and departments of HPA, and um, we, we provide them with advice and guidance on, on radiation protection issues, and also they consult with us on things like mobile phone masts, the risks from non-ionising radiation, potential doses from equipment, etc. Now there's a lot of interest recently in the potential hazards associated with uh, radio masts, in particular mobile phone base stations. Obviously there's a lot of public concern about this, there's been a lot of uh, work carried out by NRPB and other organisations over the last few years associated with uh, mobile phone base stations and mobile phone emissions. We do a lot of work uh, around MMR. Um, obviously we've got a vested interest in making sure our children are protected against measles, mumps and rubella. This is nothing to do with us hitting government targets. Our responsibility is to protect children. And one of our most important jobs has been to try to keep the uptake of MMR as high as possible. There are a number of ways of doing this. One of them, of course, is to give information to parents. Uh, we use a lot of the Department of Health information, uh, certainly in Sheffield, the district immunisation coordinator, who is a specialist paediatrician, actually runs a specialist clinic for immunisation services. But we think one of our most important roles is actually in giving professionals information. To get MMR uptake as high as possible and keep it there, your professionals, your doctors and your nurses have to have confidence in what they're doing. And our major role is to give them the confidence, giving them training, giving them as much information as we can to give them the confidence to give parents the right information and to help them make the right decision. Hello Health Protection. Hello, my baby's due to have its second immunisations and I'm just a bit worried about the new vaccines that are coming online. Young uh, a adults and the older teenagers are accepting vaccination on their own behalf rather than accepting it on behalf of a child. That makes a big difference. Most of the ones who accepted the vaccination had either heard of the mumps outbreak or certainly knew someone who got mumps and therefore they considered themselves to be quite at high risk of getting mumps and were very, very happy to be protected. Um, and so we actually found the response very good. The students were very willing uh, to, to come forward and getting 2,000 students through in a day was, uh, was no simple undertaking but we succeeded uh, very well. The students were very cooperative uh, and we were very pleased with the outcome. We need to plan for all types of challenges and, and disruptions, be it from terrorist attack or um, from power failure because of bad weather. And this is where scenario planning is really quite important. When we're testing scenarios, we need to ensure that they are realistic to the players that are around the table but equally challenging enough to ensure that we explore the issues that we might need to face during an incident. 
they often say the first casualty of any incident is the plan itself. So we need to be flexible, yet focused on how we respond to uh, any given incident. This unit's one of the uh, units that West Yorkshire Metropolitan Ambulance Service actually operates on behalf of the region. It contains decontamination equipment, blow-up tents, showering units, protective equipment for staff that allows us to decontaminate large numbers of people should there be an incident either from terrorism or from a chemical works or a chemical tanker that's uh, spilt noxious substances. It's easy to assume that a vehicle like this with a blue flashing light and a noisy siren is health and this is the health response. In reality this is the gateway to major incident response when it happens in a field or at an airport or at a big fire. But behind this there's a whole complex structure within the NHS that actually comes together to allow people to be treated in an effective and efficient manner. And around this, there's the Health Protection Agency giving specialist and direct advice in relation to communicable disease, um, toxic chemical advice, and the effects on health from a whole host of threats and hazards. I mean, epidemiology it's, it itself is about collecting information for action, that's surveillance. And we've just been helping colleagues um, in East Lincolnshire with a, an investigation into an outbreak of Salmonella Newport infection, food poisoning. It's actually, as we, as we became involved, it became apparent that this was a national problem with outbreaks in other parts of the country. And myself and my colleagues here uh, have been liaising with, with our local health protection colleagues and environmental health colleagues in Lincolnshire and undertaking a case control study um, of two restaurants involved in the outbreak to try and find out what was the actual food vehicle what actually caused their, their food poisoning. This is Charmaine Gettner. I'm calling from the Yorkshire and Humber Health Protection Agency. Um, we're working with the City Council to investigate why some people became ill after eating takeaway from a restaurant. Um, Other things that we're involved with is in surveillance, and surveillance really is collecting routine information or special information on the, the current infectious diseases for action. It's very important to stress the action point. There's no point in collecting information for information's sake, but by seeing uh, how infections vary across the patch, we can try and look into whether there are any preventive methods that we could try to uh, introduce, such as immunisation uptakes, to prevent further cases. Well, the lab work is very important in the sense that it provides often evidence for um, supporting the public health work. For example, last year we had an outbreak of um, listeria, which is a, a bug which um, can be very serious for particularly pregnant women and elderly people. And through the work that the laboratory did, we helped identify um, the source, the food source, that had introduced this into the population. We have a number of ways of, of looking for viral diagnosis. One of the important things is what we're seeing here is the electron microscope. And this allows us to look for viruses, particularly viruses that cause outbreaks of diarrhea and vomiting in clinical samples. The electron microscope is um, it's quite an expensive and large machine, it requires a lot of expertise to run it and we have the only electron microscope for, for doing this sort of investigation in this region. We can grow the virus in the laboratory uh, which is quite important for public health reasons. For example we can grow influenza virus and that's important because if we find a, an isolate of influenza virus in the season, we send it off to the central reference laboratory where they're able to type it more thoroughly, find exactly which virus it is. And that's useful because then that will f then feed into the national picture. And that virus is then used to decide what vaccines we use for the following season. So this is a very important part of what we do. One of the important elements of the Health Protection Agency is to have a, a laboratory that is integrated and part of the, the Health Protection Agency within a region. This is because we know all the players involved we, and, and we're able to communicate well with the health protection units who are obviously first notified if there is a clinical outbreak and then they liaise with us about sending specimens. We can then tell them you know, when we can get a result by and, and rapidly um, communicate the results of the tests. As well as um, virology, we also do food, water and environmental microbiology in this laboratory. The samples we receive are from environmental health officers, so this is an, another aspect of, of outbreak investigations. Uh, clearly a number of outbreaks, particularly diarrhoea and vomiting, may be associated with 
contamination of food or water sources. So it's important that as well as making the diagnosis on the patients that we identify the source. There's two lots of feedback. There's feedback to the public, which is very important, and, and interaction with the public, making sure that we have material for the public who want to know about, for example, MMR, um, vaccine. Um, so we've got some information for the public and we interact at that level with the public. Free measles, mumps and rubella vaccines in the Great Hall today. One of the most important jobs of the outbreak uh, control team is, to is deciding who is going to tell the public and actually writing a press release. Uh, what we don't want with a multi-agency team like this, we don't want various different agencies giving different stories to different parts of the media or different members of the public. So what we'd normally decide very early on is who's going to write the press releases, who's going to act as the spokesperson, and everybody on the team will agree the content of the press release so we're all happy with what's being said, but we all know who is going to do the saying. There is certainly a danger of the media exaggerating, um, but uh, fortunately we recently had a good uh, coverage by media when the new vaccination program was announced by the Department of Health uh, and actually the national media had picked it up as a, had a, as a leak and there were so many negative things being said about the whole campaign, uh, but the local media um, trusted us and just put exactly the statements, scientific statements that we gave them and uh, I think it's because of long-term relationships that have developed over the years. Leeds has within its boundaries the airport here at Yeadon, Leeds Bradford Airport. There's also a need to ensure that we have proper port health facilities <laughs> here. Obviously things keep changing. This is an expanding airport and the nature and the type of work we do moves on. But basically it falls into two halves. One half is the advice we give to immigration so that when people are newly arrived in the country, if there's a question that immigration want answered about somebody's health, occasionally there are more serious problems and that immigration may have to take into account about letting somebody in to the UK. Other times, they will simply tell us that somebody has arrived from outside the UK and that the routine health screening has to be arranged. We don't have facilities here at the airport to do chest x-rays or to do other examinations. So for those people, we follow them up once they've arrived in country. And part of my job is to collate that information, work out where in the country they've gone, and then make sure that the local CCDC is informed about new arrivals. The Health Protection Agency has to grip Port Health as an important function. It is one of the key safeguards about imported infections. If we get something exotic, SARS as being a very high profile issue not, not much more than a year ago, the Health Protection Agency has to ensure that the Port Health function is well thought out, well resourced and done properly. I'm here today um, to have a look at the Port Health arrangements for this airport, Bradford Lees Airport, airport because Doncaster is about to have a, a big airport opening and so we're planning um, what sort of port health arrangements we're going to have when the airport opens in April. It's really important to speak to other colleagues who've already been through this process and we can learn from um, their good practice and hopefully learn from their mistakes as well. It is very interesting because the, uh, the planning gets us involved with a wide variety of organisations from the emergency services through to the local authorities and the environment agency. Um, and it's also uh, interesting that when there is an acute chemical release then it's all hands to the pump to make sure that uh, we provide the best advice to protect the public's health. I mean the key thing about um, the service at a regional level is that it is, it's, it's truly a team effort. We're in the golden age of microbiology at the moment. With these new molecular techniques I've been talking about, we really now have capabilities of making very rapid diagnosis of infections and of many infections. We have such an important function to carry out to help protect the population against infectious diseases. Oh, it is extremely exciting to, uh, I think, uh, especially now that we've become part of a national agency, uh, we can call on resources at a national level for anything. And uh, it is exciting to be able to work with so many people indirectly and to bring about change. And uh, also this is an area where you can see results almost immediately, like an outbreak stopping and then it's really, you feel you've done your job.
I think we make a difference because we care, we've got expert staff. I mean, the staff are the, the absolute key resource. The expertise of the staff, the dedication of the staff, that's, that's, how we, that's why we make a difference. We love outbreaks, it's why we do the job.